Hello everyone, this is Counter Yolo, bringing you another video talking about survivability in Star Trek Online. And today, among other things, we're going to be talking about the recent uh, Support Cruiser pack that, uh, that released recently, combined with its really strong tanking trait, History Will Remember. So in this video, what I will be covering is, well, the common, common question as to why there is not an Age of Discovery release date at the moment, other 10-4 weekly news, the best regeneration stars to traits that exist in the game at the moment, including History Will Remember, um, comparing the um, these fleet versions of the support cruiser packs uh, starships um, to its closest equivalents inside the game at the moment, and then of course a TLDW at the very end of the video. Like most of the other videos that I have on the, on this channel, there will be time links um, to be able to have you skip towards different parts of, of this video, especially because the first two points of this video will be very timely and will not not apply to very much stuff in probably the next two or three months. Um, if you if you're watching this video later, feel free to skip to the last couple parts of this video because these first little parts probably will not apply as much to you a anymore. So the first question, which Ambassador Kale and a lot of other people have been asking for a long time, is why is there no Age of Discovery release date? So in order to answer that question fully, which he did answer on the Wednesday stream. We have to talk about what happened the very next day on Thursday. Now, Star Trek Online had a maintenance that happened, which is supposed to be about six and a half hours for PC and five hours for console. Now, there were some things that happened and there were some delays that kept on happening and extending that even further. It was okay for PlayStation and Xbox, but for PC, it took basically the entire day in order to fully go through all of it and there was a lot of backlash i'm not going to put those posts on here because well i would have to censor myself <laughs> if i was going to be putting those posts on here there were there was a lot of hate posts in here um in terms of replies retweets and those types of things on twitter as well as replies on facebook it's a little disheartening just to see how much hate there is whenever just even little tiny problems happen and the developers like no we have this issue we're not going to put this game back on until we have this issue resolved which is the right thing to do whenever if you're doing a little fix and something big happens and you need to fix a bigger problem that you're seeing you go and fix the problem and so even like to try to solve that problem like they said that you know, they said that because of that you know um because of that, you know, we're going to be extending the breach event by one day to compensate for the fact that a lot of you basically couldn't play today. So yeah, the long story short is that whenever we're comparing what happened with maintenance, that they tried their best to mitigate those types of problems, especially with how big they want Age of Discovery to be, they don't want that type of backlash. They want to be 100% sure that when they, whenever they say their release date, that they can, that they can, they can be a company of their word and fulfill their promise with, with that date. For those of you that don't remember, with the victory uh, with the, with the victory's life expansion, they had the release date given out, and the expansion came out just a few weeks later. Like it was extremely close. Like it, it was almost like they basically were just doing extra cosmetics alongside like the rest of the stuff with it. They basically had everything done. Like the only thing that they actually really cut from the expansion was that they. Um, they delayed the final mission home for a little bit to have it be, um, to have, have some stuff along with it. And they also haven't released the Geminar, um ship alongside it too. They might not ever release it. That's totally fine. Um, I don't know why I keep on doing that. Um, but yeah, that's basically the way it is right now. Here's the other 10 forward weekly news that they talked about during the 10 forward weekly stream on Wednesday. Um, I would have done a video on this um during the week and i would have had a different video today but um doing i'm um, comparing been comparing the trait that i would have had with this video just took too long and i want to be 100 percent sure about something and i will get to that later on in this video big things for the missions is that the biggest thing is that there will not be level restrictions anymore all missions will be, be available from the start i would imagine though that it's going to be similar to like the Gemidar um faction that they had to play through all of their faction stuff first and then everything else was available. So like with the Age of Discovery characters, 
the TOS characters, they probably still have to do their TOS or discovery missions first, and then they're free to do everything else. There is maybe a couple of hand-on missions with this, which they said would not be it would not be skippable. Like for instance, there's one for DS9, there's one for the Delta Quadrant um, that you have to go and talk to people first, and then everything else there is is open for that arc. They said that they'll be removing the following missions for um, for updates, and then once they get the graphics in place again, they would release them again. That includes Stranding in Space, Diplomatic Orders, Research and Rescue, Secret Orders, Doomsday Device, and the Kuvag Ma Bivat Arc. There, 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 there's a couple of missions dealing with dealing with with that particular arc that is kind of important to kind of talk about. Which part of the arc also ties in with Research and Rescue 2 and Secret Orders, but yeah, we're not going into that there. Um, they want to they want to make make these really really good. These are kind of like the one-off missions for the for the Federation. Um, if those of you that haven't noticed on Triple, like a lot of the Klingon missions have been unavailable for a little while because they're doing revamps to them right now. They're, they're doing revamps to the Klingons. I think that's might might be what's delaying announcing the stuff right now is because they're re revamping those older missions so that um, players that want to play the Klingon faction aren't underwhelmed by how the Klingon faction is versus like the Federation stuff that exists right now. Um, in terms of going on, um, they also said that they, they removed the following arcs from, from the journal. Um, they would still be available, but they, you'd have to go out and seek them yourself. Um, those arcs included the 2800 and Lost Dominion arc, the Spectres and Davidians arc, the Brain Invasion arc, and the Nimbus Wasteland arc. Of course, Romulans will still have, will still have the Nimbus Wasteland arc because that's a actually canon to their actual storyline, um, especially with Tovan Kev. Um, if you actually go for the installation, if, if, if actually for, for for funsies here, um, if you actually play the Installation 18 mission as a Romulan captain, and you don't have Tovan Kev actually with you, like as, as one of your bridge officers, um, he still appears and talks to his sister, and then he still shows up and 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 is the one that's threatening the Alachi at, at the end of of the mission at Installation 8, 18. Yeah, it's 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 that important that he shows up out of nowhere, even if he's not part of your actual guys um in in combat. Um kind of almost saying that he has to be there on the mission it, it itself. It's kind of it's, it's basically Star Trek Online Canada that he is there um and is there saving his sister. Alright, so for the last couple of points here, Task Force operations are gonna be available kind of like sporadically throughout as you're leveling up. Starbase one's the very first one available to all, all captains. Um, this one will eventually um, have the Age of Discovery marks with it, but since that that um, tier or that, that reputation won't, won't exist whenever the Age of Discovery comes out, instead they said that for the advanced and, and, and elite um, um, operations for for this mission, that you would just get the equivalent of additional dilithium to if you um, converted those extra marks into dilithium. So if, if you look at those those conversions, that's about how much dilithium that you would get. Well. Like probably about like like two thirds or two fifths of that, just because it typically it's like I believe it's like five. I think it's what it is. I don't know. It's it's been a little while since I've done a lot of those. Um, they said also the leveling up. You have a lot more TFOs to be able to in the mission journal. But some of them would be mission journal ones that you can also, also skip it if you wish. Also said that even if you like don't level up through missions, the all TFOs are unlocked immediately at level fifty. Last thing that he said. What I think is is pretty nice and cool is that the Winter Event ship. He specifically said that it's it's a cool ship. It sounded like he was about to talk about it more than he realized that, that he couldn't. But he, but he specified he's like it's not a Breen ship, guys. It's not a Breen ship. So uh, for those of you that have, have been really bored about Breen ships for a long time for the past couple of years, Star Trek Online, be grateful um, that it's not going to be a Breen ship this year. It's going to be something different. All right, so I'm actually now going to get into the best regeneration starship traits, and these are are the three: built to last, honored dead, and history will remember. Now, when we actually go into this, I'm I'm going to start with the general stats themselves, and then how to get them on a second slide, and the pros and cons of a lot of them. So here we go: built to last. It, it's the oldest of the three. It's um, it's activated through um, having through using a whole healing bridge officer ability. It lasts for 20 seconds, and there's nothing special um, alongside it. It's just you get whatever stuff that's here. Honor Dead and History Will Remember both have stacking mechanics, which is pretty popular that Cryptic has been doing for the past little while. 
For Honored Dead, you get stacks through getting 10,000 post-resist damage. Um, you're able to get up, up, up to 20 stacks, and you don't lose stacks until you exit combat um, and are not in, in a cloak. If you're, not, if you're not in combat but are in a cloak, you're still going to keep your stacks. Um, history will remember, um, you're able to get one stack per second, um, up to 30 stacks in total, um, per each um, enemy that is, that is a, for each new enemy that is attacking you. And this lasts until you leave the map. Uh, when it comes to a lot of the stats in general, Built to Last has a 33% weapon power cost reduction, and this regeneration scales from 30% up to 90% hull regeneration, depending upon how low your hull is whenever, whenever you activate your hull healing bridge officer ability. Pretty simple and straightforward, and also very powerful. Honored Dead, you're, um, you get an additional 20% damage re resistance rating, and an additional 2% hull um, regen to your ship per stack, up to 400% damage resistance rating, and up to 40% hull, re hull regen per stack. At max stacks, you get additional temporary hit points for each additional stack that you earn, which is basically worthless for um, the actual trait, considering that the damage resistance rating stuff doesn't apply to temporary hit points on your ship. Really unfortunate for temporary hit points, but that's the way it is, and that's why temporary hit points is, is complete garbage inside of the game right now. Conversely, with History Will Remember, you get some additional all damage and additional hull regen per stack, which in total for max stacks, this hull regen is still lower than both of these other traits, but you have other stuff going in your favor for tanking. You get an additional 10% threat generation, up to 300% up to additional threat generation, which is pretty nice for a tank. Of course, this, this threat generation is only if you have threatening stance on, so this is an elect into threat generation. Plus, the biggest thing, most importantly, is that this gives an additional 1% max, maximum hit points. This is the reason why I delayed giving out this video. is because I wanted to trade up on multiple characters because I wanted to test out this trait. I wanted to know, is this what I think it is? Or is this just extra temporary hit points that's pseudo-permanent on your character until you leave, leave the map? Good thing for everyone, this is real max HP. This, this is like as if your, your ship just inherently had additional hit points on it, which also means that this hit points has, has um, your extra damage resistance rating for your traits, um, skill points, whatever, applied to this maximum hit points additionally to your ship based upon this trait. I, I can definitely imagine this took a lot of um, finagling for Cryptic to actually to pull this off. Because definitely in terms of programming, temporary hit points and temporary shielding is much easier to put into their formulas than for maximum hit points. I've been trying to do formulas based upon other people have tried to do. It's been way too hard for me. <laughs> I've, I spent a few months trying to do it. I just really just want, I really just want to see the real formulas of how that would calculate stuff. No matter how complicated it is, I I, I just want want to see the formula. But anyway, this max HP is insanely good. This will stack no matter how high in, in levels and health everything is. This is a um, this is overall an extremely good um, starship trait thing that will completely stack however long the game goes. This is insanely good, very very insanely good. Um, in terms of in terms of, of usefulness, I'll go in, in, in reverse. This is the tanking trait of, of the three. This is by far the most into tanking of all of them. There is a little bit of all damage, but if you're actually going to go for a damage build, you'd actually want to go for one of the other two guys instead of this one, actually. If you want an actual survivability, you go for this one. If, if you want a pseudo survival and actually want to have more damage with it, you'd go with, with build to last, actually. But um, this is also a cheaper one for KDF characters. These two traits are actually really expensive for them, but I'll get into that in, in, in the next slide. This is okay for non-tank players, but it's much, much better for tank players. All right, so for Honored Dead, um, the damage resistance rate is really the big thing for this now compared to these other guys. Um, it's most suitable for your non-tank players because that damage resistance rating is very, very valuable for you guys that are not tanks. Um, so, this, so you'll still find the most value from Honored Dead versus History Will Remember. Built to Last is also a fairly well-rounded one, just like History Will Remember, except it's gone primarily into Hull Regen instead of Hull Regen plus other stuff. Um, and it's a little bit better for DPS players overall than, than for tanks. 
Also, the other pro of this one is that you don't need stacking. You're able to get the whole regen and weapon cost reduction when you actually want it. Instead of just this passive mount that's like meh or, or kind of good, this is like super great for when you act actually need it to be super great. When we actually compare this to release dates, the reason why some of you might not know this is because this just was released in August of, of two years ago from the um, from the tier six R&D promotional packs uh, available from all factions. There's a Klingon, a Romulan, and a Federation version. The Federation tier six Connie is one of the most popular and in highest demand ships still in the entire game. It's one of the reasons why the R&D promo packs still sell for an, an insane amount on the exchange is because a lot of people or trying to get those ships like either to actually play or to sell on the exchange and make money and, and sell to other players that want to play the tier six Connie. Um, and for constellations, people who want the tier six Connie but are okay with the look of, of the Kelvin ship will also take the Kelvin Enterprise as well and, and use that one. A little bit inferior to this ship, but still a decently good tank as well. Um, this is a great trait, but it's because it you have to pay 1.2 billion credits on average on the on the exchange to get this sh to get it, to get the ship for your faction. The Robin ones is actually closer, typically to 1.4. This guy's typically at 1.3 billion. They're very expensive ships. Honor Dead is 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 a roughly same situation for KDF players. This ship is easily over 700 million credits on the exchange at, at any given time. When this pack initially, initially released in, in January of, of this year, this thing was going for 450 million and selling at, at, at that price. Um, and yeah, the, like, this thing's never gone down because the trait is, is, is very good. The this, this starship is, is, is garbage, but the trait is very good. The reason why the trait was twice as powerful as, as it is now was because the trait needed to be twice as powerful for this ship to actually be viable. However, the, the double the double trait actually made the rest of the other ships who wanted to use this trait extremely overpowered. So they so that they nerfed this trait in, in, into, into the ground and made this ship basically obsolete inside of the game. Um, for Federation characters, you're able to get this really really easily just for a couple million on, on the exchange. Klingons will definitely want the history will remember though because you buy the ship once and now you just get get it from the sea store and for all of your klingon characters you just level up the ship and then you have an okay survival trait with with a little bit of damage you don't have the damage resistance rating which is unfortunate because that's still really nice for a lot of your less durable ships inside of the kdf faction but eh, well it's still a trait and it's still available to you as relatively balanced stats it's definitely more for tanking though and there aren't that many great tanking ships for for the kdf faction However, because this trait does have additional threat generation, a question that I have is that if they add more traits like, like this one into the game, there might come a time in which command attract fire is not necessary for beam tanking. Which of that becomes the case, a lot, a lot of your battle tanks for KDF might actually become viable to use for tanks, even at, even at the high end. Overall, between these three traits, this is the weakest trait of, of them all for non-tank players. If you're a DPS player and you want a survival trait or two, go for these two before you go for this one. Now, they're, both of these are relatively a lot more expensive than this one can be. Of course, this one's also a sea store exclusive trait. This one for Federation, you you can still get off of the sea store or off of the exchange itself. So it's also something to, th something to think about as well. All right, so for the last part of this video, I'm going over our, the fleet sea store support ships and seeing how they compare to other ships inside the game. So for each one of these, I'm going to compare to one other ship that I feel it most balancedly compares to and most fairly compares to. For the tier six fleet Narenda, I'm comparing to, to the tier six science miracle worker cruiser. Right now inside the game, in my opinion, these are, are the two strongest science tanks inside the game. Well, technically, this is number one and this is number three. The KDF version of the Science Miracle Worker Cruiser is actually a bit stronger, actually, than this one because the raw stats of it, of the, of the Klingon version, is much higher hull for 1.1 shields. So, in my opinion, the KDF version is actually a little bit stronger than, than the Science version, but anyway. Um, in terms of raw stats, this one has much higher hull and it's slightly higher turn rating than this one, but still, in terms of base stats for. Um, for, for tanking inside the game, they're still well within the range that, that is still viable for um, for high-end tanking. 
when we look at bridge off after seeding, that also is the case. They have commander um, en engineering. This one is temperopter versus this one Merkle worker. That's really the bigger difference here. They both have a lieutenant commander of science with a lieutenant commander of universal that you can turn into another lieutenant commander of science. To have the to have the six um, science bridge off your seat minimum that I recommend in order to be a science tank inside the game. They both have lieutenant they, whether it's lieutenant and engineering, and then this one has an ensign tactical, but this one has an ensign engineering. Not really too much difference there, just a little bit different builds that you would probably go off of there. The consoles is basically the exact same as well, with the exception that since this is a Miracle Worker cruiser, it has an additional um, uni universal console. And so as of this, this is the only science tank inside the game that is actually able to have five science consoles on it. So it, so it, has, it has the same damage potential, roughly, um, besides the fact that it doesn't have a secondary deflector. It has the same relative damage potential as any other, other regular science ship inside of the game versus the Tier 6 Fleet Narendra. However, they both have full cruiser commands, which is very nice for tanking. This one has a molecular reconstruction, while this one has the Miracle Worker innovation um, effects uh, mechanic going on. That's a little better here. Biggest difference overall here, um, if you're looking at just the raw ships itself, would be do you want the higher hull or the, the additional um, science slot to have five science consoles for, for e even more threat? But the even bigger difference here, in my opinion, anyway, especially since we're going into Age of, of Discovery, where you're able to earn fleet modules for, for Tier 6 ships, this is the only support cruiser in the entire game. This is the only science cruiser in the entire game, which is viable as, as a science tank, which you are able to earn as a free-to-play player. And for me, that's, a, that's an extremely big win for the Tier 6 fleet uh, Narendra um, support cruiser over over the science miracle worker cruiser now science miracle worker still is going to be the best tank killer in the game because of a certain console that's not, that miracle worker cruisers are able, able to have but if you only talk about that in a separate video i'm more than welcome to um and now let, let's get into the other discussion with the klingon versions now the tier 6 fleet Voral support cruiser is actually extremely cru similar to the tier 6 d7 temporal battle cruiser before I even get to the stats here, just note that normally the fleet ones are the, generally the best inside of the game. They're very, very good on par with, with your lockbox ships. With the exception of your tier 6 promotion pack ships, which are over a billion credits on, on the exchange. This is one of those billion credit ships, and so the stats should show that the fleet one is, is a little bit inferior, but not by a super large margin. They're still comparable but it is going to be quite a bit lower. As you can see here, 4-4 four, four to 5-3, a little bit lower turning and, and hole and shields. Bridge Officer Scene is obviously extremely comparable. Commander Temper Operative, Lieutenant Commander Science, Lieutenant Commander, another Lieutenant Commander that you can also make into a Science, Lieutenant Tactical and Universal versus a Lieutenant Commander Universal. For consoles, literally the exact same between the two. This one has a cloak versus the battle cloak of this one. Again, I, I, I've actually never said this on these videos before, but I mean, like, it's very similar. Battle cloaks are extremely rare for um, Klingon ships. Battle cloaks are most oftenly associated with the Romulan faction, actually. Um, but there are a few select um, Klingon ships which do have battle cloaks. Alongside that, they still have the exact same things here with battle cruiser commands and Blucker re reconstruction. Just like in the last one, this is this tier six um, fleet ship means that this is one that a free to play uh, free to play player can actually have this is one that an extremely wealthy player who, who can afford this for one character on, on their account can be able to buy and have so yeah if, if you've been looking to have a d7 battle cruiser and are okay with slightly different a little bit more modern um, star trek online looks this is a quite valuable ship for you in terms of everything else inside of, of, of the game. So yeah, that's basically it for, for the real stuff in this video. So now here is the TLDW. For the, for the, for the strong regen traits inside of, of, of the game, built to last is very well rounded and it, it has a DPS focus around it. Honor Dead is a survival cloakus with this damage resistance rating and it's, and it's a little bit better for your DPS captains because of that. Um, tank captains will like history will remember a little bit more and it's very well rounded with the tank focus if, if you can have two on them as as a tank captain definitely history will remember 
and build to last is actually the way that I would personally go. But since build to last is so stupidly expensive to get because you have to buy a building credit ship and level that up just to get the trait, Honored Dead is a very viable option if you're a Federation captain or a Federation Light Ramen captain as, as well. As you remember, is it is a C store um, trait, and so um, Klingon captains will very much um, will probably go to go to this for a lot of my uh, Klingon builds as well inside of, of, of the game. For other STL news that I talked about earlier in, in this video, missions will no longer have level restrictions, and most will be skippable besides a select few. And there'll be, there'll be some missions that will be temporarily removed from, from the game for, for revamps to make them closer to on par with a lot of the modern uh, missions inside the game. The winter ship um, in the winter is not going to be a brain ship, it's going to be something else. And the Age of Discovery announcement will not be happening until uh, Cryptic is 100% sure that, that the date that they're going to tell us is going to be a date that they will be able to, to do. Which means that they're probably not going to tell us the date until a few weeks before it comes out, just like Victory is Life was whenever that, whenever that expansion came out. For ship comparisons, the Tier 6 Fleet Narendra science ship for Federation Captains is a very strong viable science take on, tank on par with, uh, with other science tanks inside the game. The T6 Fleet Voral is a ver is, is a cheaper version of the D7 Temporal Battlecruiser. A little bit lower stats, but very comparable in basically every other way to the D7 Temporal Battlecruiser, which is the um, the Tier 6 R&D promotion pack starship for, um, for, for Klingon ships that is the pack along with like the Tier 6 Connie and the T6 um, TOS um, Warbird. Uh, and basically like a lot of this is basically meaning like they might add a couple more ships with packs alongside this as well. The big things here is that Cryptic is trying to add a lot more free to play options for tier six ships inside of the game with Age of Discovery. That is what they're doing. They're adding a couple a couple of cool additional ships alongside what we have currently. And of course they're gonna be adding a bunch more ships with probably a bunch more tier six um, traits as well whenever Age of Discovery comes out. And with each continuation, they'll add more ships as well alongside those. So it's going to be interesting to see how a lot of that is and comparing that going forward. Um, hopefully you all like, like this video. Feel free to like and, and subscribe if, if you do. Feel free to dislike if you don't like this type of, of content online. I definitely like open and honesty. But if there is swearing like normal, I will censor you. Um, there are a couple of other videos on this channel which are pretty cool for survivability for and for tanking and for age of discovery and future star trek online content um feel free to check those out um, as you wish um overall thank you all for watching thank you all for subscribing and enjoy the rest of your day